Arizona Sports. Breaking news. Yeah, this just happening during the uh, break. Um, so we're going to stick with this. Uh, Gerald Bourget from PHNX.com was the first to put this out there, or uh, gophnx.com. Uh, Robert Sarver, managing partner of the Phoenix Suns and Phoenix Mercury, today issued the following statement. Uh, and I'll just read the statement to you. Words that I deeply regret now overshadow nearly two decades of building organizations that brought people together and strengthened the Phoenix area uh, through the unifying power of professional men's and women's basketball. As a man of faith, I believe in atonement and the path to forgiveness. I expected the, uh, that the commissioner's one-year suspension would provide the time for me to focus, make amends, and remove my personal controversy from the teams that I and so many fans love. But in our current unforgiving climate, it has become painfully clear that that is no longer possible, uh, that whatever good I have done or still could do is outweighed by things that I have said in the past. For those reasons, I am beginning the process of seeking buyers for the Suns and Mercury. I do not want to be a distraction to these two teams and the fine people who work so hard to bring the joy and excitement of basketball to fans around the world. I want what's best for these two organizations, the players, the employees, the fans, the community, my fellow owners, the NBA and the WNBA. This is the best course of action for everyone. In the meantime, I will continue to work on becoming a better person and continuing to support the community in meaningful ways. Thank you for continuing to root for the Suns and Mercury, embracing the power that sports has to bring us together. Yeah, Robert Sarver. Yeah, listen, and as I said in the blast an hour and a half ago, uh, that is that is the graceful exit that I think will, will help fans... Um, not hyper focus on on the ickiness of the workplace culture that Robert Sarver was ultimately responsible for. I I commend him for recognizing that this basketball team is bigger than him. I commend him for recognizing the distractions ahead that were facing the Phoenix Suns and the heavy questions and the and the stances that they would have had to have taken starting Monday. Um, I, I respect that. I respect for him. I respect him for bowing out now for the good of everybody and for the good of the brand and the good of the franchise. It might not be for the good of Robert Sarver, but again, he's had a long run at this. He's going to make a lot of money off of this and and uh, so it's not it's not an L for him it's it's a win for everybody else that's how I would like to phrase it I think basketball fans um, it, who, who have been hoping that this would be the outcome based on what was 10 years of dysfunction uh, this is this is this is music to their ears but I, but in terms of the context of Robert Sarver coming to this decision I respect him for this I can, for, for not being defiant for not fighting to his last breath for not being the victim for realizing that even though I've got I've got a personal stake in this there's a larger interest here uh, commend is the right word. You use the right word. I commend Robert Sarver for this as well. We talked about it earlier in this show about what's going to happen on Monday when when the players have to face the questions mm-hmm. about an uncertain future. What happens after this year's suspension is up? And to Draymond Green's comments on his podcast, what happens if Robert Sarver is defiant and wants to fight this tooth and nail? Um, and and um, you know, he had every. He had the power to make this a very an uglier situation. Absolutely, uh, in dealing with with protecting what his is his mm-hmm. uh, in terms of, of of a battle with the NBA. So yeah, I think commend is the right word. And we talked about that possibility last week too. That you know Robert Sarver has a family, um, and you know at, at some point does does fighting this really become worth it? I, yeah. I, and I think the answer we both arrived at is no, it's not worth it. And it, it appears that that was the conclusion yeah, that and he you came up, to and as And you well. end up paying a fortune to lawyers and you might end up in the same place at the end of it all. The fact that Draymond Green had basically called on the NBA Board of Governors to vote and, and he basically said, listen, you know, I've heard it all, but we want to find out who's with us and who's not. So let's put this thing to a vote and let's see how this vote shakes out. I, I think that was the beginning of of this decision that Robert Sarver just happened to make. So there you go. So I wonder who is going to be in the running to buy this it's exciting team. exciting now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, listen, I, 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 I do think that this organization needs it, and I don't think there was any coming back from this. Well, that, I, I don't think it, under any circumstance Robert Sarver could have come back and just resumed business as usual. That's what I wonder, too, though, is that you know it's been made very public that Robert Sarver is the biggest stakeholder in the Suns at 35% ownership. That means 65% of this team is owned by minority owners. Right. Are they in all in, a, in agreement to, to unload this? Will there be minority ownership 
rising up to take control of the team? Will it be an outside entity, which uh, for a lot of people is exciting? Yep. It, it, it can be not the not the greatest thing either. Um, I mean, it depends on, on who steps forward. There's a lot of questions to be answered, but this is uh, – yeah, and, and, and let me say this too um, – Commending Robert Sarver not only ultimately for the decision to do this, but the timeliness with which he did it. This suspension is days old. Yeah, he might have listened to my blast. Oh, no, that's, oh, was that the being, that's that's, that's, that's be, what turned the tide? That's being indulgent. I'm joking there. I, I'm not trying to make light of of a very serious situation. Here. I was going to say maybe you listen to Draymond Green's podcast. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's also let's. Not heap too much praise on Robert well, Sarver. I'm not. No. I'm not. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm not. This- I I am not doing that. I'm 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 praising him for for gracefully surrendering this franchise back to us. I didn't and taking, expect this to happen, quite honestly. And taking yeah. the onus off the players. Who knows if Robert Sarver got uh, you know wind of what the how the players were going to react? Maybe he reached out to Chris Paul, and maybe Chris Paul let him know, yeah, no, this is not. We're not. We're not. We're not cool with this, man. And, but he should have already known that. So I, I, I think that this is a this is an exciting time for the Phoenix Suns now, and, and you hope that the next owner uh, c- can get this thing done, can get this franchise to the finish line. Um, I've heard of you know John Najafi has got a lot of money. He he fits the N- NBA profile of what they want to be and what they stand for. Um, Artie, I wonder if Artie Marino it. is local and he's selling the uh, Angels. I've heard people speculate that with his strong ties to the Hispanic community, of which Devin Booker has tapped into, that he would be a great candidate. There's any number of super mega wealthy people we've never heard of who will probably get involved in this. Mm-hmm. But I do think this. I do think that before the decision was Jerry Colangelo's to sell to Robert Sarver, and at the time I don't think Jerry Colangelo quite understood the rough edges of Robert Sarver's personality, but I do think the NBA is going to be very careful in who takes over and purchases this franchise. You have to be. You yeah. have to be. You have to it's be amazing that. also what in modern sports the public pressure, what it can do. Look at the, in the long investigation into Deshaun Watson. They came down with a punishment. And public pressure just said, this is not right. They had to give up harsher punishment. Mm-hmm. The NBA investigation into Robert Sarver, a long, long investigation that came down with a punishment. The public pressure said, this is not enough. Mm-hmm. And now he's selling the team. Yeah, I mean, again, I said I didn't expect this to happen. I certainly didn't expect it to happen this quickly. We talked about the brewing storm last yeah. week. We had one major sponsor, not even fully pull out, threatened to pull out if Robert Sarver returned. As the managing general partner, I expected, quite honestly, more of of that along those lines. I mean, you have to wonder about the possibilities of employees that were affected, that were dissatisfied with the ruling from the NBA. Are they going to come forward with civil suits? I thought this was, if if it was going to get here, I thought this was a ways down, yeah, down the line. Yeah, I, I, I did think that this was going to happen. I did not think that Robert Sarver was going to return. I did not know what was going to happen this fast. But as I said in my blast, I was really hoping that this would happen before training camp because this team yes. does not deserve this. Yeah. I sit back here and I read this and I, and I read the statement and there's still, you can, you can read twinges of bitterness, tinges of bitterness from Robert Sarver. More than tinges. More than tinges of bitterness from Robert Sarver about being denied the ability to spend the next year proving to everybody that he's changed or he's not that guy. A reference go, to a current unforgiving climate. Oh uh, yeah, right. Basically exactly. saying he's getting canceled. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. That's exactly that's what, what he's, he's saying. That's what he's saying without saying it. And and that that's the one thing that I step back and I say this is exactly why this has to be the outcome because I don't think anybody really believes that Robert Sarver feels that he's done anything all that wrong and and those screenshots that Baxter Holmes retweeted today are proof. Yes. They're proof. He wants to be forgiven, but still seems to believe he didn't actually do anything that requires asking for forgiveness in the first place. That's right. And and so, and the reaction and those screenshots are proof. If you go back and read them, they're proof that that he doesn't see this as any issue at all. So, I'm, uh, so this is, you know, I, I think this is a victory to the players. I think this is a victory to LeBron James and Chris Paul. And Draymond Green and the new head of the NBPA. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah if you're vic- worried, uh, if you're worried about how this was going to affect this year's basketball team, that's a question you asked Al McCoy, the the, the 50 plus year voice of the Suns. That question, 
uh, because that was lingering. And you know, this is this is unprecedented territory yep. for this franchise, right? For a team that does have championship aspirations and mm-hmm. probably wants to erase a really bitter finish last year. I mean, that gets washed away now. Yeah. 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 Can I also uh, add that he starts off the press release with words that I deeply regret now overshadow nearly two decades of building organizations that brought people together, et cetera. So clearly they're referring to the use of the N-word in the workplace. Still at no point, still, is there any reference to asking a female employee if she upgraded with breast implants. Uh, The claim that he told his female employees that women cry too much, that he pulled down a male colleague's pants, that he exposed himself. He still doesn't address any of that. He just focuses on words that he said. Yeah, which is a, a, a he, one part right, of the he's, picture. He's positioning himself as, "Hey, I'm being canceled because of this unforgiving climate," and I do take objection to that. But I do, I, I, I am relieved that this is the outcome. I think this is what the basketball team needs to move forward. This franchise uh, otherwise would have been in a terrible state of limbo. Terrible. Uh, where this would be a distraction, where it would certainly be an obstacle to recruit any players. You would have the NBPA basically uh, basically telling people you cannot go to Phoenix because, because of this. So I, I think this is, a, this is a day of celebration for Phoenix Suns fans is what I think this is. Yeah, you mentioned too, you know, the potential uh, as, as Robert Sarver prepares to sell both franchises. And you mentioned the name John Najafi, who obviously is a, is a very wealthy man. $3.5 billion net worth. $3.5 billion uh, dollar net worth. I wonder now if this development changes his stance. Last week, he made it very clear when he called for the ouster of Robert Sarver that he didn't want to be the managing general partner, right. and he was steadfast about whoever is the next steward was the word he used would would treat that that position with respect. I wonder if this development changes that. I wonder, I wonder. If, if John Najafi wants to be the guy now. I wonder. I, I wonder that. I wonder who else is going to get involved. I do think, like I said before, I think the NBA is going to be the NBA is going to be deeply involved in who is going to be the next majority owner of this Bob basketball Iger. team. That's, Bob Iger is the name been that's been about out there for a few years. So, yeah. so just to give you the general impression of Robert Sarver in the NBA community. This is what uh, Adrian Wojnarowski said. There were always concerns that Sarver's stubbornness and desire to paint himself as a victim would make him willing to continue as a pariah in the NBA community. But his decision to sell the Suns and Mercury bails out the league and his ownership peers. It's true. It does. It bails, I was going to get to that point, himself, too. Silver, you ever seen this guy, Jerry? <laughs> he, he still, he, he's going to have to wear that. He's going to have to wear the fact that that his penalty was was deemed absurdly light, which forced the players into doing this. Now, maybe that was the game plan all along. There are people going, hey, this is all 3D chess from the very beginning. Whatever. But I, I had said I expected this to drag out. I think a lot of people that had an interest in this expected Robert Sarver to... To, to, to dig in. To, to dig oh, yeah. in and, and, and fight this. And, and you've had your battles with Robert Sarver over the years. Indeed. You've butted heads and uh, you didn't you didn't necessarily feel that way. That, that this would drag. I, I just I thought that this pressure was going to get too much for 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 this to go on, for this to be tenable. If the pressure got to that point, then the NBA the NBA owners probably would have called a vote and probably would have chosen to address this and then had to sink that money into legal costs fighting it. I think they probably were willing to do that. But I do think that this this intermediate step was effective. It got the result. And, and now we can welcome a, a new, different owner to Phoenix. And, and hopefully this one will, will, will be of championship timber. Put it that way. That's a good way of putting it. Do you think other owners are exhaling right now? Sighs of relief. Okay. Yes. We don't have to vote. People yes. Don't we don't have to worry us. about being sued. We don't have to worry. We don't about have to get bills. a spotlight on us. Yeah. Exactly. We don't have Although, to worry. About, we don't have to worry about our owners. emails being subpoenaed. Yeah. Look at their emails. Look at their text messages. Go after them. Go get them, girl. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> Ruthless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of people breathing easy right now. Yeah. And, and Luke Lipinski. Him. Have you ever heard of this guy, Jarrett? Is he breathing easy? He, no, he pointed Sounds out, like what a 72 hours in Arizona. Changing of ASU coaches, oh, that crazy comeback in Vegas, and now this. Oh. And we still have two days left before the weekend. And the Diamondbacks finally wow. beat the Dodgers. Hey. Ah. Wow, the craziest <laughs> yeah, of all. Okay. The craziest of all.